I mean, we could we could open the meeting and get through the staff overview of procedures and things if you wanted. I'll call the meeting to order. And you know, what's the next thing on the agenda? I don't have mine in front of me. Uh, well, that would be staff review of remote meeting procedures. So we can Go do for that. It. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to share screen. Everybody who's on. This is really more for people who are. Um, watching via ORCA and decide that they want to log into the meeting. Let me get to... Uh, hold on. Are you guys seeing a remote public meeting Word doc or are you seeing a internet screen? Uh, remote public meeting. Review of DRC remote. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. My little green thing was on a different computer screen. Um, all right, so um, for those viewing the meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in this design review committee meeting via the Zoom platform through um, video or telephone access. The link for Zoom access is here. Here yeah. is phone number. And then we have meeting ID and password um, for using either of those options. You can also get the full agenda materials through the city website. If you're having problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, also, if anybody is having difficulties while accessing the video conference um, features, you can text me using the chat function. Um, so for everybody involved, this meeting is being recorded as well as streamed live via Orca Media. Turning on your video is optional. Public testimony will be taken verbally, um, especially in this hearing, I don't have anything written that was submitted to, to add to the record. Um, the chat function should only be used if you have troubleshooting or logistics questions, and the chat will be added to, um, give me one second, uh, to the public record. Please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking to reduce background noise. And for those participating by phone, if somebody calls in, um, then star six will allow you to mute or unmute if you don't have a mute button on your phone. Um, as a host, I can sometimes manually mute and unmute people. Every once in a while that feature doesn't work and I'll ask you to Hello. mute yourself. Hey Steve, we're just going through the remote meeting procedures and then we'll be able to hand it on over to you. Okay, sorry for the slow loading. It's been 20 minutes trying to get on. Huh, odd. Um, so uh, if you're interested in speaking on a particular matter and it's not something that you were originally on here for, um, then just raise your hand physically or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. For those on the phone, you can press star nine to do that. Um, and then just a typical once the chair has recognized you to participate, then please unmute your microphone, confirm that you can be heard. If you're not an applicant um, or otherwise listed on the application materials, we'll need you to provide your full name and address for the record. Um, and we're asking people to um, keep comments, if it's the public commenting, to two minutes. Um, the chair might grant additional time after your initial two minutes if needed for follow-up questions. Um, you know, if, if you finish up your comments, you can provide additional input, including on other matters, but only after the chair recognizes you again. In the event the public is unable to access this meeting, such as I get emails from people saying they can't get in, then we'll have to continue the meeting to a time and place certain. If you are having connectivity issues, try turning off your video or closing other applications on your phone or computer. And if you're having trouble seeing the document screen share, all the files are uploaded to the agendas and minutes page for this meeting on the city website. Please note that all votes taken during this meeting that are not unanimous will be done by roll call vote. I'll now hand this back over to the instead of the vice chair, the chair. Um, Does Eric so, want to continue or do you want me to start? I, I think you can go ahead, Steve. We didn't actually do like the introduction of the DRC members and things. We jumped right into the um, remote meeting procedures. So if you want to introduce everybody, we could do that and then jump to the first agenda item okay. after the procedures. But, sorry for the delay. Welcome to the November 2nd, 2020 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. 
I will let committee members introduce themselves by speaking their names. <clears throat> Martha Smirsky. Eric Gilbertson. Liz Pritchett. Anna Smith. Steve Everett. And Cheney. I'm sorry, Ben, you were there. Okay, do I hear someone make a motion to approve the agenda? So I move to there. approve the agenda. Second that. All in favor, speak your names. Martha. Eric. Liz. Ben. And Steve. We can move on to the first application for one Bailey Avenue. For Vermont State Employees Credit Union, the applicant, Montpelier Conservation Commission. And again, this is to review an interpretive sign at the VSCCU Rain Garden. Is someone there to describe the application? Oh, Paige, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Thank you. Yes, this is Paige Gurton from the Conservation Commission. Go ahead and describe oh. your application for us. Okay, um, this is actually part of a project that was started last year, um, the rain garden at the credit union. And the sign was, um, the sign is an interpretive sign that will explain um, the functionality and the purpose of the rain garden to the passing public. Um, the sign will be right, uh, not right next to, but between the uh, bike path, the multi-use path, um, and the rain garden where it will be visible. Um, I hope you all have a copy of the sign that was designed by Holly Greenleaf of Greenleaf Design. She's quite a talented artist. Um, and the, the question I think here is that we have several logos on the sign that are um, companies, well, the credit unions and um, Sarah's Equilibrium LLC. Sarah was the designer of the rain garden. And Simeon's here from the credit union. He was the um, our credit union contact and amazing uh, facilitator. Um, and uh, so some of the logos are commercial establishments. Um, and I think that was the, the question that, um, or the issue that Meredith raised with this and asked us to come to uh, design review. Um, the, the information on the sign is intended, as I said, to inform the public about um, the functionality of the rain garden. And it'll be part of hopefully a series of signs along the bike path at different um, stormwater, green stormwater infrastructure sites that will help to clarify the connectivity of the rivers and the lake and the significance of the waterways um, to the city and to the people and to our history, et cetera. This one focuses on the specific rain garden and how it works. It's very cool. Anybody have any questions? And I can share the, the application if anybody wants me to. My, my curiosity is, are there any other commercial establishments than the ones that you named on the sign that contribute uh, money or whatever? I, um, who else is on the sign? We've, I think they're all nonprofits. The River Conservancy, perhaps the Conservation Commission. Um, the only one would be the Vermont Youth Conservation Corps. And I think, I'm assuming that's a nonprofit. I would think so. Um, and there aren't any other commercial ones, right? Um, okay. Simeon? Thank you. Uh, Paige. No, Paige, I'm looking at the sign now and it's all nonprofit organizations, uh, except for VSCC, which is a not for profit credit union and equilibrium, okay. which was the design. That's what I thought. What is NEIW? The New England Interstate Water Pollution Control Commission. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they shortened their name to just the initials, but that's what it is. And they actually, they 
oversee the grant with the Lake Champlain Basin Program. The grant actually comes from the Great Lakes Fishery Association. It's all this long chain of reporting that um, all of which is pretty much nonprofits and government organizations. So um, the, yeah. the only I, one that's not the nonprofit is the equilibrium? Yes, and the credit union. And the credit union. But we have to acknowledge everybody's contribution. I mean, Sarah, Sarah is Equilibrium's owner, Sarah and her husband, and they basically did the lion's share of the work on the garden in terms of design and maintenance. And um, so you have to, the Vermont Youth Conservation Corps actually constructed the garden, um, Lake Champlain Basin Program, and Neipwick um, basically um, uh, funded it, and Sustainable Montpelier um, Elizabeth Courtney worked with uh, Sarah on the design and helped with um, brochures and uh, information that we handed out. So, you know, it, you need to acknowledge everybody one way or another. It's not intended to be a promotional thing. It's an acknowledgement. I, I think that's, that's clear with Equilibrium playing such a large role, they ought to be acknowledged. Oh, yeah. And the rest of the people, it's the credit union land. So, yep. I yep. guess it's on the it's on their property. So it should there shouldn't be. I mean, they have a obviously a large sign on the building, so there shouldn't be any is issue. I would think, and with having their name on the sign as as is equilibrium. Steve, can I just clarify something? Sure. Um. Uh. So. Yeah, it's not, it's not that there's necessarily an issue under the des design review standards about having the credit union and equal equilibrium on here. It's more that it suddenly triggers us potentially into a commercial purpose, which then triggers it into the sign definition, which means it ha needs to go through design review. It just, it's a, a flow through of the way that the zoning regulations are drafted that I don't have a clear, um, out from requiring a permit for this particular interpretive sign given the what's on it and where it's located. Um, it, it's just an unfortunate combination of circumstances so that it needs a permit. And because it's in design review, it has to go through the design review committee. I don't think that there's any issues with it getting through design review. It's just the way the language is written. We can solve the problem by approving it. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do any committee members have any other questions, comments, or suggestions? The oh, only comment, I, I like those low-mounted slant face signs. <laughs> but I think they're really nice. And the no, idea is... Nice. You can stand, you know, you can look at the sign and you can look over the top of it at the garden and it explains things while you're looking at it, which is nice. Um, just a point of information, Sustainable Montpelier Coalition is a group of, um, well, it, Equilibrium was in it, but it's it's nonprofits like the Vermont River Conservancy, the Friends of the Winooski, uh, Sustainable Montpelier. Um, so it's a, what we did is collect a bunch of people who were concerned with water uh, issues and green stormwater infrastructure. And we all kind of got together and made a logo that will be consistent across all the signs. So it's all, it is a non-entity basically. It's just a group of people who are trying to work together to get something accomplished. And so we hit, that's what the Montpelier Waterways logo is. Well, thank everybody. Thank you guys for doing that. I think it's really neat. Yes. I do too. Nice and I vote to approve. And a nice sign describing it. I'll I stop by the, the rain garden and take a look, hopefully soon. <laughs> soon as okay, it yes, as soon as the snow melts. <laughs> I can, unless anybody has anything else, I can read through the criteria 
for all projects, exterior design and materials of a new construction or alteration of an existing building. It says additions to existing buildings shall respect and be compatible with size scale materials detailing on character of the primary building and its environs. Additions shall not, shall not obscure or undermine the essential form and character of the original building. That's acceptable. We can skip some of the non-applicable criteria. And then lastly, landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, or other types of furniture visible or acceptable landscaping should not be placed or designed in a manner that would obscure or undermine key architectural patterns. That's acceptable. Existing historic fencing shall be preserved, if any, that's acceptable. Mechanical equipment, uh, utility structures, there's nothing there that needs to be screened. And then green fencing, such as hedges planted with native or hardy landscape species can be employed as effective buffers. Uh, the landscape garden is fine and that's acceptable. And then the sign itself, size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, material of all exterior signs shall be compatible with the buildings and structures, that's acceptable. Sign design, color, topograph topography, and respect shall respect historic precedents. Acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture. That's acceptable. And that's all the criteria that applies. And can I ask the committee members to all in favor speak your names? Eric. Martha. Liz. Liz. Ken. Anna. And Steve. So the project is approved. Thank you. Thank Simeon. you, guys. Right. I think Simeon has a question. Uh, it's more of a statement, actually. I just wanted to quickly but wholeheartedly publicly acknowledge uh, Paige Curtin for all of the work that she did to both um, uh, vision this uh, project, um, gather the resources needed to make it happen, uh, bring the um, Stone Environmental um, Environmental Impact Study that was happened years ago and just really saw it from its inception to this point. Um, just uh, really thankful for Paige's dedication to this project. Um, and uh, the city for um, supporting it and all the nonprofits that were involved. It's been, it's been a great um, civic engagement piece. And I really hope that the intended um, outcome of both mitigation of you know, pollution into the river uh, happens, but additionally that it becomes a place where people can become inspired and learn more about this uh, activity and this project to further um, uh, make Montpelier um, a place where this is recognized as a, as a, as a good thing to be, to, to do. So thank you, Paige. And with that, I'll say thank you very much and leave the meeting and go have my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Simeon. And let me say that the credit union was absolutely incredible to work with. They jumped into this pro process wholeheartedly and were just fantastic. Uh, we worked with a bunch of people in the grounds, the, the, the facilities director, Simeon, everybody was just so helpful. It was fantastic. And Sarah's been maintaining it all summer. Hey, I got a question for you. Yeah. Is, is there a sign plan for the uh, parking lot that's next to the transportation building? Because they put, they put in a, a garden there as well. They did. And there isn't one planned yet, but that's on my radar. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Not yet, but hopefully there will be. Um, so just a quick process question, not question, notice to everybody um, that because there weren't any committee recommendations or tweaks um, for this review, we will get, be getting that permit 
ready and out as soon as possible. Um, however, City Hall staff has been basically booted out of the office, um, out of the hall until Thursday if we aren't involved with the election tomorrow. So the earliest it would get issued is Thursday. Um, so maybe shoot me an email if you want to be able to pick it up if possible from Audra. Otherwise, we'll just get it in the mail. Um, I'll, I'll just have Audra send me an email when it's done and I'll come pick it up. Can um, the credit union begin site work or whatever they need to do? Uh, I don't know what the process of the sign, I think it's in construction. Can yeah. they proceed or do we need to wait until we have permit in hand? Do uh, so you mean to actually install it? Yeah. And in that site work? I mean, technically you're supposed to wait till you have the permit in hand so that you can post it. Okay. Um, but we'll, we'll get that, I mean, it'll be out Thursday. Okay, just have Audra shoot me an email and I'll come get it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, great. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you very everybody. Much. Thank you for your time and good luck with your project. Thank you very much. We're excited about it. Hope Take you get care. some good weather to install the sign. <laughs> <laughs> just pile the snow up around the bottom. Anyway, thank you, everybody. Um, thank I'm you. Signing out. Thanks, Simeon. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. We can move on to the next application for 99 State Street, the Malone property. Is there someone there to describe the application for us? Hi, Alicia Feiler with Malone Properties, um, and also Sarah Huffmeyer is here. Um, so I, Sarah, Meredith, do you mind if I just share my screen? Is that okay? Okay, um, so this is, we had come before uh, you folks when we were doing the initial design for the 99 State Street um, revisions. And I, I have that, if we can compare it. Um, there was a big topic of discussion with the two existing Norway maples in the front um, and their, their health and condition um, and whatnot. And so that's been reviewed. Um, and also the tenant looking to move in, had some ideas about the, the gardens um, in front of the building. So this is the area between 99 State Street and, and State Street itself and the sidewalk for State Street. Um, so we had proposed this previously uh, to keep the existing Norway maples and then have some additional plantings, new plantings soften in the front of the building. Um, but we, in light of the, more, um, more review of the health of those trees. Um, there's some new trees being proposed and I'm gonna let Sarah comment on all of the actual plantings, but some of the site features that we're looking to um, spruce up or kind of finish off are that the, there'd be a raised granite curbing along um, the edges of the, of the gardens. This ex existing walkway, which is concrete would remain there's existing granite benches that would remain. Um, there's a much larger brick patio space uh, in, in, on both sides. And we'd be reducing that to kind of just to be at the actual bench areas and not have as much impervious. Um, those are the, the site features and maybe Sarah wouldn't mind uh, just, just mentioning about the actual plants themselves. Sure. Yeah, with, um, with the federal style building and just looking at, um, it's always good to look at what the neighbors have and make sure you're getting in diversity. So something, especially with the trees, you know, they're um, looking at the different species that are on the same block and making sure we're using different species so that if a pest comes in, like we all know emerald ash borer is here. And so if you have a you know, ton of ash on one street block, you're going to lose all those trees. There aren't a lot of honey locust around. So honey locust is a rugged tree. Again, it's an urban area. So that's one that really survives well. Um, and it casts light shade. I was also thinking about the leaves and how um, if you do have people walking on this area, the leaves aren't quite as slippery in the fall time as uh, larger leaves like oaks or maples. Um, that's kind of just a little side note though. That's just like a week that it really affects. 
Um, but then as far as the plantings go, just looking at different bloom times and making sure there was some kind of color. Um, I love, I was so happy whenever I heard Pat wanted to take out the, um, the brick pavers and extend, extend the green space. Um, it's much more in line with, oh, now is it the right next to the post office? Ah, as I have a, a blank. Um, next to the community bank, but they they have two service berries in the front and they have an extended lawn area and it's much more in line with that. I think it's more welcoming in general um, and just way better for stormwater management too. Anytime you can get that filter infiltration, um, it's doing a good thing. Uh, if you have any questions about the specific plants too, I'm happy to answer them. It was, um, I went with more classical and then also just looking at the surroundings. So um, a yew hedge was, is already um, kind of, it exists there and it's used in a number of different places. That's a great plant that as it can take full sun, but then as the trees cast more shade, it can also take full shade. So it's one kind of planning the next five to 10 years and making sure this is kind of a planting that you don't need to change out as the shade changes or as the conditions change. But I'm happy how, to answer any other questions. <laughs> how, how, how tall would the uh, trees be when they're planted and how tall would they grow? Yeah, that, um, so we found, uh, um, I'm also on the Montpelier tree board and we plant a lot of urban trees. And unfortunately, the trees that are planted in the downtown don't grow quite as quickly um, or as are robust as you'd find with more green space around them. Um, I always recommend planting trees that are at least five to six feet tall at planting. That way they have a good start, um, bald and burlapped usually. And honey locust, this specific one, if, it's, if it reaches its potential, it will be 45 feet tall. I don't think it will get to be that tall in all honesty. It would take twice as long as a normal honey locust, just given the stresses that are on it. But, um, and then it's spread actually isn't quite as large. It's, um, you typically see them 20 to 30 feet with a spread. So it'll be, it will be sizable. It'll just take longer than a normal tree that's planted in a park. Sarah, the hydrangea that you're thinking about, are you thinking about colored ones or white ones? Both. So, um, we were thinking of doing, um, and it depends also on the pH of the soil. Mm -hmm. um, you can a lot of times, yeah, there you go. You can see some of them. Um, the, the white hydrangea, the arborescence variety, that hydrangea arborescence, mm -hmm. those are really rugged. They just grow really, really well in different conditions. Um, there are so many cultivars now out there, but these ones were chosen kind of for size and the colors will play off the other blooms that are, are blooming at the, at the same time. Um, but hydrang hydrangeas in general are the later season blooms. But then I love the way that they hold on to their blooms even into the winter. So it just gives one more thing that holds snow and holds frost and kind of has that, oh, don't get me started on plants. It's my love. Okay. <laughs> it has that lovely look to it, magical. Yeah. Okay. One other that I um, item that I hadn't mentioned is that part of the um, the plan is to have a, a wrought iron fence. Um, and so I wanted to show a picture of what we were thinking that would look like, um, just so you can be aware of that. Um, so this is a manufacturer that I that I found and I was able to get a quote from. Um, just uh, some of their their pictures that they have of their fencing. So it's a very simple um, iron fence. It's, we're proposing it to be three feet tall, and it's going to be very similar um, to this type of thing. That there's a there's a the walkway. There's some either the sidewalk. Um, up to our building or the sidewalk along State Street, there's gonna be a row of plantings, a fence to kind of break it and make it a little more formal of a garden space, not have people walking through, but it'll only be three-sided. It won't prohibit people from getting to one side or the other or um, not allow for maintenance of, of the plants themselves. So it's just uh, going to be a fairly simple um, 
design, but a, a heavier, you know, wrought iron fence and not just a kind of small little plastic thing that gets thrown in. Um, that's, that was another piece. Could you go to the site plan and point out where the fence is going? Absolutely. So this, it, this line here, it kind of comes down, it makes it like a little miniature U is the um, fence line and it would be mirrored on both sides. So it's shown about like about a four foot, maybe 16 feet and then 12 feet, um, kind of three sided sections um, along the, the curving and edges of the impervious. <coughs> Thank you. I think it's very attractive. I like the, like the plan, I like the fence. It's going to be great. Looks like it's very well thought out. And I remember you're coming and thinking about those Norway maples when this was when the project was first proposed. Yes, and I'm glad Pat reached out to Sarah to to give it a extra facelift. This is going to be. I'm excited to see how it comes out. Does anyone else on the committee have any comments, questions, or suggestions? I guess my quick question is regarding that fence and what, how those posts are mounted. I assume there's concrete going uh, four-ish feet down to support each post, or how are, how are those posts uh, held up? I think that there there can be a, a concrete, um, like a sauna tube concrete piece underneath, um, and it depends on how tall of a pole you're you're willing to put in um, as to how big of a, a concrete base that requires. Usually, the concrete base is um, twelve inches in diameter, so it's not it's not a huge thing, and that would be under. Um, at kind of a, maybe like an inch above the ground, but it wouldn't be sticking up. It wouldn't be like a light post um, base within the fence post. It would be essentially hidden from um, site. How deep are you going with it? I, I was uh, going to check in with the manufacturer that we haven't um, formalized any orders or anything, but usually, um, they're four feet deep so that the fence, the first frost doesn't start going, going crazy and skewed. Any other questions? If not, I can review the criteria. This is an all, all projects set of criteria. And number three that applies is proposed landscaping shall be compatible with the neighborhood and the site on which the project is located. If it's acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, including fencing, shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact were adequately and appropriately screened from public view. In this particular case, the fencing is enhancing the landscape design. And then lastly, landscaping screening and site furnishings. Site furnishings, including fencing, and anything else visible from the street or side yard shall be considered within the context of the existing building, its site and contest, context, and that's acceptable. Landscaping should not be placed or designed in a manner that would obscure or undermine key architectural patterns, that's acceptable. When practical, existing historic fencing shall be preserved. There's nothing there that was there existing at this time. Mechanical equipment, there's nothing there in this application. And green fencing, such as hedges planted with native or hardy landscape species, can be employed as buffers. And again, there's no, the fencing here is the iron fencing that's proposed. 
and that's acceptable. Do I hear a all in favor of the application? Speak your names. Eric says yes. Martha says yes. Liz says yes. Ben says yes. Anna says yes. And Steve says yes. So it's unanimous. It, application is approved. Thank you. Thank you for the participants who came to describe the project for us. Thank you very much and good luck with your project and hope the weather improves so you can make some, some advancement. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks everybody. Bye. 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 Get out your permit as pretty much as soon as Audra can get back in the office to do it. Thank you. Has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes from 921 and 1019? I would move approval. We'll start with the September 21st. Uh, that was myself, Eric, and Liz. So Eric moved approval. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. <laughs> okay. And Everyone who approves, speak your names. Eric. Liz. And Steve. So that one is approved. And the next minute, set of minutes is for October the 19th. Has everyone had a chance to take a look at that? Yes. I move approval. Do I hear a second? I'll second. All in favor of the October the 19th, speak your names. Eric, yes. Hannah, yes. Ben, yes. Steve, yes. I think I was at that meeting, so I'm not voting. So that one is approved as well. Does anyone have anything else to add? There, there it shows in 89 Main Street or City Center an informal review of the skinny pancake. Benji, are you on still? We have an, e an email here. Is there anyone to describe their project again? Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, so um, we would, after all these years, really like to put in a full head system in our restaurant. Um, um, all of our other locations, we um, serve uh, burgers um, in the evening. Um, and there are some other limitations. Uh, we, we've actually done a lot over the years with the space, given the limitations. But, um, we're looking to put in a, a resource so you can do cook things like a hamburger, which we are not currently able to cook. Um, and uh, we've worked with the uh, building owner and with sort of the local, uh, the most tenured professional group of food systems in the area called NevTech. Look for an internal route to try to run the vent and it really, there is no viable internal route is what they have both repeatedly come back to, um, which leads us, uh, looking to the front of the building, which is not where I would want to go, but I don't see another option. And um, before the pandemic, we had um, engaged with the city council and asked about uh, this and the suggestion was maybe it could be painted. So we submitted a proposal from a local artist and uh, 
um, it was resoundingly rejected by the council. So, um, uh, <clears throat> so here I am to ask if you can get, uh, a different type of art where um, we could try to paint it in so it looks like the brick. Um, is there a viable way that uh, we could run a vent stack uh, like you see for a hood system uh, up uh, on Main Street? Uh, coming out of the skinny pancake. Yeah, I think it would come out at the top of the floor. Benji, would you like me to share my screen with the packet so that everybody can be looking at the same thing? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. That would be great. All right. So I've got up right now where they're thinking about running the stock, where they've been able to find a place to run it. Um, right, here's another view from the other side. And then you have to bear with me while I rotate the screen all the way around because for some reason in this view, it won't let me rotate it counterclockwise. There we go. So this, I think, Benji, you said was what you've done in Burlington a few years ago, right? Uh, yes, that, that was, uh, we painted it to blend in um, to the facade behind it. Yep, and this is, you said you took this picture just recently, correct? I did, yes, that right before I, yeah, like a month ago. Please feel free to Ask me to scroll or do whatever on this. Can you can you show us the um, uh, the Montpelier building drawings? Um, I'll have to rotate again. So give me a second. Okay. <clears throat> So the, the duct is a 12 inches wide and 12 inches deep, it looks like. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And it's, it's just flush to the building, except up on the roof. Uh, yeah, yep. Uh, it's like, you know, <laughs> affixed with brackets, maybe a few inches off. It's the same duct to you, it's the... Um, you know, for any restaurant. Um, so, right. so. It, it, it goes up to the second floor, then takes a diagonal across. I think that's in the window. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, painting it would certainly help um, kind of camouflage it, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, I think the original proposal was like um, painting it was uh, not trying to hide it, but actually like it was a Mary Lacey. She's a, done a lot of large scale painting in the area and um, it was like very artistic, um, you know, and, notable noticeable intentionally um um but we can also paint it to look like brick i have I a really question wanna, i really want to be ahead. supportive of this of the skinny pancake but i have a very hard time with this vent in the front of the building if it was in the side of the building i wouldn't have a problem at all um, and, and I understand your situation. I understand you're stuck. Yeah. Um, thanks, Martha. I am. Um, <laughs> I'm not doing myself any favors in saying this, but I understand why you would 
have some concern. And so my question is like, if your decision is thanks, but no thanks that, okay, I, I just probably, I would like to do this if you gave me permission, but if you feel like it's not something you want to give permission, then I just sort of kind of want to close the book on the option. Um, but we it got interrupted sort of mid pandemic, early pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, we never came to the idea of, can we camouflage it? Mm -hmm. so there's that to consider. The, uh, a question, the uh, Bluestone Pizza has a direct vent out on the street and I'm not particularly fond of it, but is there any chance of doing that? Uh, no, that's, I, I believe that's uh, grandfathered in, um, although it has been pointed out to me as, well, if they can do it, why can't you? And that's, that's what grandfathering is, you know? I yeah. just had to ask the question. So. <laughs> yeah. I have a question about the structure of the building. I'm assuming that the skinny pancake, that the floor of your space is a slab. There's, I mean, there's no space or crawl space underneath it, correct? That is my understanding. And then how much, what's the height of the ceiling in the skinny pancake? Hmm. I don't know, maybe 10 feet. It feels a little, um, I, I'm not quite sure, but I, I would guess 10 feet. Now, your neighbor next door is, is still AT&T? Yes. Has anything been explored about running a horizontal duct from your space through AT&T to the outside of the building on the side of the building? Yeah, we talked about that, um, and it seemed it was uh, deemed unfeasible. Um, you know, we'd have to tear out their drop ceiling in order to run the duct. We'd interrupt their business for like a week. Um, it doesn't seem like that's there's no there's no space above the drop ceiling. No, in fact, there is. Um, in fact, there was once a duct that ran there uh, for a bagel shop a long time ago. I was told, I, I, but it, it's a matter of it's another operating business. Who are we to step in there and say, hey, we're going to tear out your roof and disrupt your business, you know, for a week. Um, the, the Bagel Works was in where at and That's right. Uh, other question is, is there any way you can get a straight shot up the building by, for example, going into this, to the space, uh, the entry space? Um, that seems possible. Um, uh, as it's, uh, wouldn't necessarily interrupt at and So if that worked thereby, but you see the way the windows are laid out, I'm not sure that would help. Right. Um, but I wonder if you could run up the stairway there inside the building. I mean, uh, well, I mean, when we've explored routes inside the building, uh, there is a tenant upstairs and, um, you know, it, 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 it intersects their building, their space. I, I have been told, I haven't looked at their space specifically, but what I have been told by the landlord is it's not feasible. Um, and just a quick note on the- Where, where was the- Go ahead, Steve. I had, I had a question about the pre-existing duct for the bakery or whatever was there before. Is, is, is that above the suspended ceiling? Well, there, I don't think the duct is there anymore, but I, I, I think the bagel shop had a duct that was running out the side of the building, not on Main Street. Um, so it suggests that if we could cross there. They fried much stuff there. Uh, you know, it was mostly a heat and steam vent. Uh, the, the other question, uh, I, I hate, you know, suggesting designs, because you clearly thought about this a lot, but running it out, running your uh, ductwork sort of at the corner in the front of the building where your seating is now outside? Um, well, we certainly, I think we, we haven't looked in that direction because it seemed like that was only uh, more prominent um, at the corner of State and Main like that. Uh, or, uh, if it could, if it could be run up right on the corner, 
of the building. Uh, it would, I think it would be, it wouldn't be very visible at that point. Not like a zigzag up the side. I'm totally happy to explore options that uh, the committee thinks uh, are potentially viable and come back with some designs. Um, I think I'm trying to get a sense whether you feel there is anything viable working on the main street facade. So if you think it's the corner of the building, I'm, I'm open to looking at that. I, I, and I, I agree with Martha that I'd really have a hard time approving it's right on a, a primary facade of the main street on the building. And the, the kind of zigzag is, bothers me because if you just had a straight box going up the side, it becomes almost, you know, it's not very visible. Uh, and, and painting it to match the bricks, uh, it's just not very, uh, uh, very feasible. I mean, you've got, uh, thank you for putting that up. I don't know who did it, but. Uh, if you can describe where you were thinking, Eric, I could run the pointer. I see there's two places. One is just right on the corner, right? Yep, up that way. And the other would be back in the corner uh, in that in that corner. Hmm. Um, I, I just a quick note, and this is something that I'm not totally sure of. And Benji, I don't know if you have that resource handy, but since you're talking about like burgers and frying stuff, I don't know how much horizontal venting they can have for that kind of venting that has grease potentially collecting it. I just don't know. That yeah, might be you can travel a distance horizontally. Whenever you have a turn, you need to have a clean out. Um, and so the more turns you have, the more clean outs you have. Um, uh, yeah. Um, there is a fire escape uh, sort of right in the corner next to the city center facade um, and our building right, right in there. So I don't know if we could get in there. Uh, I, my, my hunch is we couldn't. <clears throat> Maybe here. I mean, maybe if we penetrate it right at the front, yeah. You could uh, come out uh, above the sign band mm -hmm. and go up on either either corner. That would be good. I don't know what the inside. It must be an office in the corner on the second and third floors, huh? I, I don't. I don't know what's in those in those corners. I'm thinking about the inside. To, um, I'm curious if you folks feel that uh, working on that, um, what would it be, um, on that other face, and not the Main Street face, but the sort of one that points towards Langdon Street? So like the patio face? Yeah, is that, would, would that improve the situation? It would for me, Benji. It, I, I could live with with Eric's suggestion of going up a corner there. Um, <clears throat> okay. I have, a, I have a question. Has Was Black River Design ever consulted regarding the potential to place of vent? Uh, I'm not familiar with Black River Design. Because they're the ones who originally designed the building. No, no, that's not. I'm sorry? Black River did not design the building. It was uh, a guy named uh, Bill Richmond that designed, uh, and he was independent. Uh, and the answer is no. Uh, we we engaged Nevtech. Um, they're like a, pushing forty years of installing hood systems um, throughout Vermont, mostly, but elsewhere as well. Um, uh, yeah. Um, I can come back with a proposal that focuses on the corner uh, to the left of the blue flag. Um, for what it's worth, I, in my mind's eye, between the blue flag and the American flag, I think that's, is that a Vermont flag? Or between the American flag and the Canadian flag, seems like it might be a little less invasive than um, uh, right on the corner. It, it, 
does anyone um i think right on the corner would blend more would be able to blend it in more and would you want us to try to paint it in like brick yeah okay i i, I don't know i don't say i i don't uh, necessarily if you extended it up that corner and right on the corner and painted it to match the the uh uh I don't know what the material is above the sign band. I, it would look like part of the building. Right. So we'd paint that section gray, but as it went up, because it has to go up past the roof line, we would try to continue to blend it in as brick. Yeah, I would just, well. I can support it on the corner as well. I'm curious about whether it would also be maybe a place for some of our uh, the various different Montpelier banner signs that you can kind of see one in the corner on the on the um, light post, that one, yes, and then further down. Feels like it might be a nice way to be, um, sorry, come, yep, yeah, right, you can, I'm pointing at it, Meredith, why can't you see me point? Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yes, on that, on that, um, Well, you can, on the various light poles, there's all these different Montpelier signs. Mm -hmm. And I think there is possibly some way to make that um, structure for the vent be able to maybe be something that helps beautify the downtown with things like that, that makes it feel maybe a little bit more intentional. I don't know. Some um, kind of a, a design painted on it and actually turn it into something like a sign. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I, th I thought about uh, making it into a column. I'd put a round duct up and make it into a column, but. I had that same thought. Uh, I think there's opportunity to go up that side of the building and I would be interested to see what you came back with. And I, I think that's a great suggestion of yours, Eric, to move it over there. And I feel like in, in that moment, even if it did become more of a statement piece of art. It makes a lot more sense on that side than it does with some weird turn and, sure. you know, like I feel like that's a, that's a place where a piece of art would go that would feel intentional. Whereas okay. on the other side, it did, doesn't feel intentional. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I obviously like Montpelier, you know, like, great about celebrating the arts and if we can contribute in that way like that would be really fulfilling for us um, the challenge there is a uh, one one person's uh great artistic taste is the next person's like you know agreed so how do we get to a place that feels good for uh y'all and then ultimately the city you know um, I, I certainly i will come forward with one version which is painted in as brick the next time I show up, kind of regardless, just so it's there as a placeholder. Yep. Um, yep. Um, yeah. Um, I was thinking of the Troy, New York sign. I don't know if you're familiar with Troy, New York. They have a logo that's like, it is the Troy logo. And as you all were talking, I was imagining some kind of statement. Uh, you know, we could... Um, uh, you know, some, some, I mean, it can change, you know, we could over time, um, could say something different at, at, uh, over the course of years, we could repaint it, but, um, uh, can, do y'all have any thought on process there other than us just kind of pulling something out of a hat and saying, what do you think? Um, um, my suggestion would be that I get you in touch with Montpelier Alive. Okay. Um, who coordinated all those banners that are on all the light posts and have also coordinated some um, other placemaking work here in Montpelier and see if they have something that they've been working on that maybe um, could team up with you in fairly short order. But I'll yeah. connect. One, one, one thing to keep in mind is that building was designed to be Art Deco. You can look at the, uh, the entrance way, the main entrance is that way. And it actually had a cornice at one time and lintels over the uh, windows. Uh, and that was taken out for financial and federal review uh, pieces. So some kind of a design 
that fit in with that Arctic home motif might, motif might work pretty well. Can you say that Arctic what was that? Arctic O. It's just, look, look it up, A-R-T and then space D-E-C-O. It's just an architectural style. Okay, I miss it. Okay, Arctic O. Okay. Yeah, cool. Um, well, it, um, I can reach out or, you know, I directly or wait to get put in touch with uh, my live and look to put a proposal forward that, um, yeah, I'd ideally uh, builds on vibrancy, doesn't detract from it. The uh, idea of uh, trying to conceal it by painting it like brick. I don't care much for that because it's never really going to look right. Yeah. Uh, no yeah. matter how good the yeah. the stone is a little different. Yep. Yeah. You showed in Burlington. Yeah. I mean, you could just paint it the color of brick, but I, I agree with Eric. I don't think it should look like bricks. This is an option, but it could, there's other options too. I think painting it uh, the same color as the uh, material over the sign band, I don't remember what that is, but. So it's just a white mm -hmm. post going up the side of the building. Okay. Yeah. Just what it is. Um, mm -hmm. If I start generating a with uh, Montpelier Live, uh, they, I, are, are words an option or should we stay away from words? I, I don't think so. I think words would be fine. I think, uh, you know, just if it just said, welcome to Montpelier, I mean, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, <laughs> I'm into that. I think. Okay. Uh, thank you all so much for the creative. Oh, we appreciate your efforts. Cool. Thank you. Yes, it's a very, very tough problem to try to solve. <laughs> right. Still meet an, enough criteria. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Benji. Yeah, good luck with it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. I'll be in touch and we'll work. You know, I'll, I'll help as needed to help you get an application put together. Cool. Thank you. You're awesome. Really appreciate it, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Good. Thank Bye. you for coming and describing it for us. Thanks for your time. Bye. Does anyone have any other business at this point? No. Uh, Only thing I'd like to do is remind people that uh, the Historic Preservation Commission is going to be working on a guidebook for these uh, new design review regs and any suggestions anybody have would be more than welcome. Yeah, the um, HPC will be meeting again next week. Um, and so if you have any thoughts on guidelines before then, that would be great, but we'll still take them after that as well. We're working at this point on a um, grant application as well as an RFP to try and get proposals to actually then affect on that grant, hoping that we actually win some money. Um, and then the other separate item I just wanted to tell you as well as any public watching is that um, City Hall is, the, the city clerk's office, of course, is gonna be open to the public for voting tomorrow, but other offices in City Hall will be closed. And then City Hall will be closed to the public for the remainder of this week um, until next Tuesday, because there's gonna be so many people going through City Hall um, tomorrow that they wanna make sure they give it all a thorough cleaning. Thanks. That's all that. Okay, thank you. Unless anyone has anything else, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Certainly. I second it. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Liz. Ben. Anna. And Steve.
meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Good, Thank you. good to see you without a mask, even. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye now.